Let us start now the chapter on research questions. Those questions that should be inspired by the research objective and also the schematic representation, the so-called research framework. Those questions, addressing a design problem, a practical problem, or addressing the answering of a fundamental question, fundamental research question, can be also divided into sub-questions. And each sub-question should also be connected to specific tools and methods, mostly inspired by the literature. Chapter 4 on research questions is the natural way to proceed. It immediately comes after the elaboration of the research framework, after the understanding of the problem and the derivation of the research objective. These research questions, as I said before, can be divided into sub-questions. We can start here one more time. Please recall that everything starts with a problem or a question that should be answered, a fundamental question, fundamental research. We should have our statement. And once the statement, the system, and the scope are clear, and once we have defined the technical requirements of the stakeholders, in case you have stakeholders, because not all the time you make use of that tool, it's not always necessary to make use of that tool, then you will prepare the research framework. Once the research framework is ready, together with the objective, then we can jump to the elaboration or, or, or the setting of the central question. It can be more than one central question, and I always suggest that we should stick to one. But sometimes, depending on the research, you may need even two central questions, connected to design or connected to fundamental research. Of course, the focus now is the central question or central questions. Depends on the type of research or design you are performing, you will have probably only one or two central questions. Normally, I recommend to have only one. And from that central question, you will have a series of sub-questions. Let's assume three to six. That depends a lot on the type of research that you are performing. And each sub-question is meant to gather knowledge by using some specific tools and methods inspired always by literature. Let's recall that research framework, it's an intermediate step between the research objective and its design and the elaboration of a research question or different research questions. What we would like to gather here is knowledge. And this knowledge is gathered via the research questions. Normally, we define a central question, and from that central question, a uh, derivation of sub-questions, it's done. It's an extension of the central question, and this is the most efficient way. Depending on the type of research, you may say, okay, one central question is not enough. But certainly, if you are adding more central questions, it means that more sub-questions should come. So please keep it simple. As much as possible, keep it simple. Needless to say, it's the fact that the central question and the sub-questions are not exactly the same that the questions you will ask to the stakeholders via the stakeholder analysis. The stakeholder analysis is indeed a tool to understand the desires and then these desires to be translated into technical requirements and also to add those ingredients into your problem statement and later on to your research objective. But those questions that you will ask during, inter during an interview are not the same than the design of the questions or the central question and the sub-question during the design of the research project. What's the meaning of this? Well, efficiency. Efficiency is in terms of the degree of knowledge to be acquired, the answers that we are looking forward to find, and so that the contribution of your research but also the stream function. The stream function throws light into the activities, into those tools and methods that the researcher will perform. And this is why preparing a research question, it's a job that takes some time. Besides, of course, the preparation of the research objective and besides the setting of the problem statement. Please recall that we need to be efficient. The more you have to explain, the less clear the research design is. 
What is the meaning of that? For instance, if you take a central question and you think that six sub-questions are necessary to be answered in order to answer the core question, then it means that we need to think about six different tools or methods connected to the literature to reach those six different milestones. So then I say, think again, are those six sub-questions really necessary? Maybe we can make it down to three or four? So this is the part of efficiency that we need to consider. And don't forget also the characteristics of steering. Both are requirements when preparing core questions. The steering function is connected to the knowledge, knowledge that can be exploratory or descriptive, but also is connected to those materials, methods and tools necessary to answer the sub-questions. That information should be part of the design of your questions, your sub-questions, your core questions. Formulating, confronting, evaluating, and even adjusting your research objective based on what you have found so far with the questions, it's an iterative process, similar to the process of preparing your research framework. Formulation of the questions, confrontation with reality, evaluation of the questions so far, and even going to the modification of the research objective. It's a process, it's a continuous process. But certainly, this process is also connected to methods, and this process is also connected to the objective. Asking yourselves if that set of questions, central question and sub-questions, are enough to meet the research objective, is the same than asking if the amount of knowledge, gathered knowledge, it's enough to achieve the objective. Questions is equivalent to knowledge that ultimately will solve the problem or bridge the knowledge gap, depending on whether the project is practice-oriented or theory-oriented. This is where we are now, deriving research questions. If we make use of the research framework, this is a schematic representation of the full research plan, then we can jump from the objective to the core question, and we can come back in an iterative process. But the elaboration of sub-questions will depend on the knowledge that we want to gather, the so-called core concepts, and also the so-called types of research. This is linked totally to the knowledge and the step stones that we will achieve. And with this, we can also achieve our research objective. Now, this is a very interesting slide also, and it's a typical problem when preparing a research plan, when writing down questions, mostly the sub-questions. The so-called how can type of questions. For instance, how can the problem be tackled? This question, actually, it's just a research objective in disguise. There is no reference to gathering of knowledge. It can be solved by modifying, but not just that, of course, can by no. This type of questions, these how can questions, should be avoided. Here we have a second example. To what extent is the design being properly carried out? It's a type of design question. It's not exploratory and doesn't really gather enough knowledge. With this type of sub-questions, we cannot really go further in the, in the research that we would like to do. Now, there are three types of questions that are acceptable, and you can find them, of course, in the reference provided in this slide. There are two main ideas to recall here. When thinking about questions, core questions, central questions, or sub-questions, we should be thinking about knowledge. We should be thinking about methods and tools. And we should avoid also the type of questions that doesn't bring us further into the research. And one of the last slides here was, of course, 
the type of problematic questions, the how can questions, the ones we should avoid.